And we have our first updates from NASA's Lucy mission. NASA's spacecraft that was launched in October of 2021 with really one main purpose. Exploring a unique number of asteroids in the solar system that we actually believe represent the leftovers from planetary formation four and a half billion years ago. And specifically focusing on the types of asteroids we find stuck around Jupiter, the Trojans and the Greeks. The unusual locations in certain orbits, which result from what's known as Lagrange points. Tiny pockets of gravitational stability created by interaction of two massive bodies. For example, the L2 point around planet Earth is of course where we usually place a lot of space telescopes, including the James Webb Space Telescope. But it's the L4 and L5 that are particularly interesting in this case. Earth actually has its own Lagrangian asteroids in this location, and you can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. But by being the most massive planet in the solar system, Jupiter acquired a lot more. We don't actually even know how many, but thousands and thousands have already been confirmed, with obviously many more, much smaller ones, hiding in this region as well. And so because these objects are somewhat mysterious and very likely existed for an extremely long time, and because we've never visited any of them, back in 2017, NASA decided to confirm the mission known as Lucy. Technically named after the first hominid, also named Lucy, an extremely important specimen of early hominids discovered back in 1974 in Ethiopia that essentially taught us a lot about human evolution. And so here the researchers decided to name this craft Lucy as well, hoping to learn as much about planetary evolution as well. And initially when the mission was planned, it was meant to visit just a handful of these asteroids or these Trojans and Greeks, mostly because it's kind of difficult to visit all of them. But over time, as the mission progressed, and as more data about these asteroids became available, including more accurate data of their orbits, the researchers realized that they can actually visit up to 11 objects, including some objects that were believed to be just a little bit too small to visit at first. And a few months ago, it was actually able to take this beautiful time lapse you see right here of four of its future targets. This obviously doesn't tell us much just yet, but it definitely tells us that the probe is working and all of the tracking, as well as all of the instruments, seem to be functioning normally. And this is an important test because this mission is going to take a pretty long time. Due to the small nature of the probe, it actually has to fly by planet Earth several times in order to conduct what's known as the gravitational slingshot maneuver. It basically acquires just a little bit of speed in order to position itself in the right orbit. And it's going to be getting its next gravity assist in 2024. And so it's actually not until 2027 that it will finally arrive to observe some of its first Trojans. The ones you see right here. But following this, it has to conduct another gravitational assist in order to then see the Greeks, with the whole maneuver taking approximately six years. With those images very likely coming out sometimes in 2033, basically 10 years after I'm making this video. But the first images of the first objects that it was going to visit just came out. Because when planning this mission, the scientists realized there are some smaller asteroids we can visit as well. First of all, to test the instruments, but also to obviously do some science. And the first ones are in the asteroid belt. And so in order to test everything and to make sure that everything works, the scientists picked a very unusual asteroid discovered back in 1999. It was actually found by accident and it's relatively small, roughly around 700 meters in diameter, and technically did not have a name initially. But in February of 2023, the scientists behind this mission decided to propose a name that was now accepted. It's now known as Dinginesh, which is a really cool name for two reasons. First, it's the name of that hominid that we found in 1974 in Amharic language, the language they speak in Ethiopia. But second of all, it's the meaning of the name. Dinik means wonderful with the name Dinkinesh meaning you are wonderful. That's right, you are wonderful. So hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Yeah, that intro took a while. So today we're discussing these recent updates from Lucy, recent incredible pictures from this asteroid Dinkinesh, confirmation that everything seems to work, and an unusual discovery from the asteroid that nobody expected, and also what all of this means. So let's start with the picture. And here it is. Yeah, it's not just one asteroid, it seems to be two. And because this is actually a series of pictures, we even get to see how they orbit around one another. These images were taken approximately 13 seconds apart. And although it might actually look like the orbit of this asteroid is ridiculously fast, 
This is also the result of apparent motion. This spacecraft was flying at approximately 4.5 km per second. And it was able to snap these incredible pictures during this time. And so the motion here is really due to the speed of the spacecraft, not the orbit of the asteroids. But most importantly, it essentially confirmed one important thing. Everything about this mission right now is not just ridiculously accurate, but seems to work exceptionally well. The tracking, the cameras, the data acquisition and data transfer, basically everything works as planned. And not just as planned, but even better than planned. Despite the fact that initially the mission was actually struggling for the first few months. The video in the description talks a little bit more about this. And this is why this particular target was picked. Scientists wanted to see if we can physically take the photos of a much, much smaller object moving at nearly 4.5 km per second, even though the object itself is only 700 meters across. And here the distance was also pretty far, around 425 km or 260 miles. And well, the quality of the images tells us everything. Even though the distance here is 430 km, the image is absolutely incredible. Showing us features and details we've never been able to see previously, and obviously uncovering its unusual small moon. And though by itself discovering that this is a binary asteroid was obviously a bit of a surprise, in reality it really shouldn't be. Because it turns out that many asteroids out there are very likely binary asteroids just because of the nature of how things work in the solar system. And let me briefly talk about this after showing you this other picture from the other asteroid, the one known as Dimorphos. This was of course part of the NASA's DART mission, where they try to test if they can redirect an asteroid by colliding a satellite with it, which turned out to work really, really well. And so when they studied these two asteroids, they discovered something that many scientists suspected for a long time. They're very likely just a piece of a larger rock. As in they used to be one rock, and now there are two. And something similar is happening here as well. This is a result of a very common effect in the solar system. It's known as the Europe effect or Yarkovsky effect. You can learn more about this in one of the older videos in the description. But in a nutshell, the way it works is relatively simple. Any small object spinning in the solar system will have two surfaces, one bright and hot and one dark and cold. But as the asteroid spins, this hot and bright part will obviously suddenly find itself much darker as the asteroid spins around its axis. And all of this heat will now have to come off somehow because the asteroid is now cooling down. And this actually creates a very similar effect to a tiny rocket engine. It sort of starts emitting heat as the asteroid cools down, over time slightly changing how this asteroid spins around. And so as this happens to various asteroids, as they spin faster and faster and then even faster, they eventually reach a point where a piece of the asteroid starts to come off and basically forms its own object. This is technically known as mass shedding. And it's entirely because of this rotational acceleration, only because of this strange Yarkovsky effect, the effect from the sun. And though we can technically calculate this for a sphere pretty easily, and it generally seems to cancel out on both sides, if the object is not perfectly spherical, it will have an even effect. And so either accelerate or decelerate over time. And so it's quite likely that Bano is also going to experience this shedding event producing its own moon sometime in the future. Unless it collides with planet Earth first. But that's basically the eventual fate of a lot of asteroids out there. Most asteroids relatively close to the Sun in the inner solar system over time are very likely going to become binary as the material from the equator gets ejected due to centrifugal forces. Which is now what the scientists believed happened to Dimorphos and Didymus as well and so many other asteroids, including of course this one. And so any kind of a near-Earth asteroid or an asteroid within approximately 5 astronomical units away from the Sun, if it's been in this location long enough, is most likely going to become binary. In other words, this part represents some of the freshest and least exposed material in this entire asteroid system. But this only happens if the asteroids are close enough to the Sun. Some of the other ones, the ones much farther away, can become binary for other reasons. Normally it's because of collisions, which do produce a lot of pieces orbiting around, or in some cases, by some kind of an orbital capture because of gravitational interactions on the outskirts of the solar system. But that's a lot more rare than what we see right here. And so it's actually quite likely that a lot of older asteroids, especially the ones much closer to the Sun, are all binary. Either way though, by discovering that this is a binary asteroid, 
and by obviously finding more similar asteroids out there, we can then start assessing the age of these asteroids, the overall migration across the solar system, because in order to become this, you do have to actually spend some time much closer to the Sun, and one day possibly even discover what happens to these asteroids after they become binary as well. But at least for now, because this is just a recent observation, we don't really know much else. Okay, wait. So here I was about to finish the video, about to have my lunch, basically start my day and so on, and then NASA goes, no, 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 not so fast. We just found something even crazier about this encounter and about the moon orbiting this asteroid. As Lucy was flying across, and as it kept taking pictures of this asteroid, one of the last images from around 1600 kilometers away revealed a different side of this unusual moon. Turns out that it's actually a kind of a double moon. Or more technically, a contact binary. Kind of similar to that other contact binary pictured by the New Horizons a few years back. And in this case, first of all, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, second of all, obviously creates a mystery, and third of all, means that the system is just super complicated. Now, contact binaries are usually pretty common in the solar system, and they essentially form as two objects slowly approach each other, eventually becoming one over time, but in this case, it kind of made sense. It's really, really far away from the Sun, and here things do happen really slowly, and orbital velocities are normally super slow. But here we have a different story. How exactly could an object form from an asteroid and then form a contact binary the way we see it right here? So either this moon came from somewhere entirely different, which of course means that we have no idea how it got into orbit around this asteroid, or there is some really really complex formation history involving a piece separating from this asteroid first, and then somehow connecting to another piece forming what we see right here. And moreover, both components seem to be extremely similar in size, that's actually never been seen before. And so looks like Lucy has started its mission with a bang. A mystery without any answer just yet. A double moonlet of a very small asteroid. But whatever this is, it's most likely going to directly lead to various explanations about how planets form over time, because this is very likely the result of some kind of a clumping we still don't understand. Either way, super cool updates, really interesting discoveries, and obviously more to come. And the fact that this was achieved at such a high velocity with such a small object is super impressive. Which also means that once it gets to those Trojans or Greeks, we're going to be getting insane amount of super accurate data, very likely discovering some incredible mysteries about the solar system in the process. But it's gonna take like 10 years. So yeah, we're gonna have to be patient. And actually by 2033, it's going to assume a very intriguing permanent six-year orbit between L4 and L5 clouds, technically allowing the scientists to extend this mission indefinitely. As long as everything works and as long as the instruments are still functional and there is some fuel left. But at least for now, that's kind of all we have. We're going to hear more from this mission in the next few years as it actually approaches its next target, this asteroid that is going to be approaching in 2025, but for the next year and a half, it's very likely we're not going to hear much unless I guess something breaks, which I hope it doesn't. And so until then, thank you for watching, check out some of the previous videos in the description, subscribe, share this with someone who wants to learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.